And we begin today with Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee, who is in Salt Lake City. He has a new book out, Written Out of History, The Forgotten Founders Who Fought Big Government. Welcome, Senator. I want to start with health care. Majority leaders had trouble getting 50 votes. You are pushing something called the Consumer Freedom Act. How will that get a majority of your Republican colleagues? Look, this bill, the one we've been discussing in the Senate, uh, has bailouts for insurance companies. It has hundreds of billions of dollars in tax relief for the affluent. It even has some provisions for the poor. Who it leaves out are the forgotten man, the forgotten woman, uh, those earning a combined household income of $75,000 or so, uh, who have been left behind. And these are the people who helped propel President Trump to victory last November. We need to do more to help them and to make sure that they're able to purchase the kind of health care they want, the kind of health care that's affordable for their families. So as I understand it, what you're proposing would allow states to have insurance companies that had none of the Obamacare mandates as long as they kept one plan that would still have those uh, parts of Obamacare that people like, the protections for pre-existing conditions uh, and the essential health benefits. The criticism is that if you leave just one plan, that it ends up getting all the sickest patients, the premiums go through the roof, and while premiums go down for other people who are healthier, that you create essentially the cl classic death spiral. Well, the death spiral is what we see with Obamacare right now. And the fact is that by guaranteeing them at least one Obamacare compliant plan, uh, we're guaranteeing them exactly what they have now, but giving them more options, options that would inevitably unleash free market forces that would in turn bring down the cost of health care. That's what we want to do. As to those who would be on the Obamacare compliant plan still, there are ways of funding those. So there are ways of making sure that those don't go into a downward spiral. So how would that work? Because the ways of funding them at the moment are subsidies that are tied to a percentage of your income uh, that, so that premiums don't get too high. Is that what you're suggesting? Because the problem here, of course, is that if premiums do get very, very high, that people will then be priced out and you'll have the sickest people unable to get insurance. That's right. And there are concerns with that. But we have to remember that for those who were underneath the 350 percent of federal poverty level line, uh, those people would see their subsidies go up as their costs went up in the insurance pools. And so we think those people would be essentially held harmless, and we would see other people, other people who would avail themselves of free market forces, being able to unite with an insurance company, wanting to sell them a, a policy that they want to buy and a policy they could afford. Let me get at a place in the politics here where some of your Republican co uh, colleagues are very nervous, which is that there would be one Obamacare sort of vestigial plan that would have protections for pre-existing conditions. Uh, but they worry that only one plan that would do so would really not be protection for pre-existing conditions because those premiums would be so high. And they think that is just politically uh, something that can't be sold to your Republican colleagues. Do you have a, an answer for that? Well, yeah. First of all, th this is no different really than what they have right now, where people have access to a plan, a plan that very often they can't afford. A plan whose premiums are too high, a, a, a plan with a deductible so high that they can't really use the policy. We've got to do something to re-inject free market forces into this environment. And look, uh, if, if we can't get this done, I have made clear that if we can bring free market forces to bear, we can bring down costs for middle class Americans. But if politically, for some reason, we can't get that done, what we ought to do is get back to what I've been suggesting for the last six months. Uh, which is to push full repeal and then uh, embark on an iterative step-by-step -step process to decide what comes next. Yep. Th this is consistent with what basically every Republican who has campaigned for federal office over the last seven years has promised to do. This is consistent with what we did in December of 2015. But and this is probably what we ought to be doing now if we can't save this effort. If Republicans can't agree on a, re a replacement option at the moment, why would they be able to uh, agree on one in the future? Well, if we adopted a, a, a measure, if we passed a measure repealing Obamacare and put a delayed implementation measure in there, with the understanding that at that point, after passing the repeal measure, we would under, undertake the step-by-step -step process of deciding what comes next, I, I think it's easier. Sometimes when you lump too many things into one piece of legislation, you doom its likelihood of success. And I fear that that might be where we are today. And I think that explains a lot of what President Trump was talking about in his tweet the other day, what Senator Sass mm -hmm. mentioned in his series of communications so, on Friday. And I think it's very much worth considering. It's consistent with what I've 
thought would be better, uh, a, a more likely to succeed legislative strategy over let the me, last six months. Let me move on to your book, Written Out of History. It's an argument about what's been lost. Explain to us what's been lost and why that's important now. What's been lost are the stories of our early forgotten founders, those who taught us about things like federalism, uh, about separation of powers. One of the things that we've lost today is the understanding that not all power is supposed to be vested in the federal government. I tell the story of eight forgotten founders, uh, people like Kanasatego, an Iroquois Indian chief, who taught Benjamin Franklin about federalism, about the idea that you can form a confederacy in which the central power has only limited powers and local control is retained. Benjamin Franklin then taught those principles to the other founders who worked uh, those principles into the Constitution. We've forgotten about Canasatego in large part because we've forgotten about federalism. And yet, as we see from these discussions about health care today, uh, there has never been a time in American history when we've needed federalism more. This is neither Republican nor Democratic. It's neither liberal nor conservative. This is simply American. It's a constitutional value, yeah. one that would work well today and one that would allow more Americans to get more of what they want out of government and less of what they don't want. That's why I wrote Written Out of History, is I want the American people to be able to reconnect with these stories of these forgotten founders. Let me ask you another, for, as somebody who's been thinking about the founders and their standards and keeping them freshly in mind, the founders talked a lot about the virtue of their president. Evaluate based on your view of the standards the founders set for virtue, the current behavior of the president this week. Look, the president of the United States uh, is a, a unique man. He campaigned on a very uh, aggressive platform that involved draining the swamp. The president takes a unique approach, one that differs uh, from many of his predecessors. It's not going to do any good for me or anyone else to come in and just comment on things we might not like about his Twitter behavior. The best thing we can do when we want to elevate civil dialogue in our American political discourse is to do whatever we can to make sure that we treat others kindly, with dignity and respect. And that's what I intend to do. All right, Senator Lee, thanks so much for being with us. Happy Fourth of July. Thank you.